and I know you, you know, have a lot of information um, free and stuff that people can purchase on dropping weight. So maybe you don't want to give away like little secrets, <laughs> but do you have, or do you notice like big mistakes that people make going into it? I mean, there's like the classic ones that people just, you know, completely dehydrated themselves. Um, but maybe something that's a little less obvious that you see a lot of athletes do that you, you try to correct pretty early on. Uh, sure. So first is we, we could take a long-term view of first for people who are planning to cut weight for a competition is just getting them to think through, should you be actually cutting weight? A lot of people think it's a good thing to do because they see others doing it. Um, and there's this kind of concept that, that the more weight I can cut or the, the lower weight class I can get into, the more competitive I'm going to be. And that's not always the case, but people have this in their mind that, oh, if I can lift this total at this weight class, if I just had to go down one, I'd be way more competitive. I could be winning that weight class. Not realizing that, well, if you're going to go down to a weight class that's nine kilos below where you are now, you're not going to be lifting where you're at, right? So it's, it's not that same comparison. Uh, and similarly, this is the same thing if you look at boxing or MMA. A lot of times it can be a, a good idea. If someone's able to make weight effectively for a lower weight class, they're going to be essentially bigger for that weight class, the whole idea of making weight. But for some people, they actually perform better at a higher weight class. And we've seen quite a number of examples in a, even an elite level over the years that have done this, either guys that don't cut much weight or people who have gone up a weight class and performed even better. And so first I would get people to really think through their assumption that going down to a lower weight class is necessarily going to be better. Um, the second is looking at a long-term view of, okay, do you have a lot of body fat that you can and slowly diet down to make that the actual cutting weight process in that final week much less. Um, I think that ties into the methods that people use to use what, lose weight in that final week often get centered around how much they can dehydrate themselves. And so probably one of the big pieces that they're missing or at least underestimating is other strategies that can allow you to modify your weight with before you have to resort to some of the water loss dehydration stuff. So for example, one that we use with all our athletes is a low residue diet or a low fiber diet for about two to three days. And simply doing that for the two to three days before you weigh in will have zero impact on your performance. It, it won't decrease at all. All you're doing is going on a lower fiber intake for a few days, but you lose some of the residue that's in your gastrointestinal tract. So you're actually losing mass that's just sitting there in your intestine just from going on this low fiber diet. And up to that, depending on what someone's habitual fiber intake can be, that could be as much as 1% of their body weight they could drop just through that method. Now, if they can drop that 1% of their body weight just by that low fiber intervention for a few days, that's saving them that 1% of body weight that they would otherwise have to sweat out and dehydrate themselves by. So it, it's being aware of other strategies like that. Uh, then we could look at like carbohydrate restriction, um, and so on, as opposed to just thinking it's about uh, eating as little as possible and dehydrating myself as much as possible. So that tends to be where people go wrong. They either try and cut too much weight, they don't take a long-term view of cutting weight, or they don't use the right strategies. And, and I'm happy to talk about any specific parts of any of those if you want. 